Now, there's, uh, there's a new thing that came out about Twitch here, and that is the 2024 like roadmap a little bit i don't know it's a it's a letter from dan clancy which is the ceo of twitch and he talks about a couple different things that they're working to commit this year i haven't looked at this at all so this is my first impressions i haven't read any of this so i want to um i i kind of want to read through some of this i don't know that is a lot of stuff holy cow but uh let's go through it and break this down uh somewhat and just kind of see where twitch's direction is going to kind of go here in the next year or so is kind of what they want so let's take a look here helping you grow your communities in 2023 we improved many of our existing products to be more efficient for you we made it easier to reach new viewers on other services with the clip editor which i agree if you don't know what the clip editor is it basically allows you to get clips of your of your channel take them and edit them into vertical form content so you can very quickly I think you can upload directly from Twitch. You can edit them in Twitch and directly upload them to uh, TikTok or YouTube Shorts or whatever you want. It is it is actually a really, really good tool and it does help content creators. So this tool here is really, really nice. And our updated simulcasting policy, which is honestly another amazing change. It doesn't even matter if you're a partner, you can multi-stream um to kick if you wanted to it's really like up to you it's it's uh, the multi the simulcasting thing really good i, I think that was a, a very big beneficial standpoint and i think that honestly helped kick a little bit but not a ton though and here's why i don't think it helped kick a ton because of kick's reputation even though they would be allowed the multi-stream to kick they just um, don't want to do it because it might uh, hinder their brand, right? Saying, oh, well, um, by you streaming on there or multi-streaming on there, you support all the activity that happens on the platform and stuff. That's the current state of Kick. So I don't think it really helped Kick a ton, but it may be a little bit. But uh, yeah, but ultimately for Twitch terms, yeah, this was this is a, a, honestly a, a good, a pretty good thing. So um, yeah, I know a couple of people who multi-stream to Kick anyways, right? Right, and there will be people who just don't care. They will just multi-stream to kick anyways. Some people just don't have anything to lose. But I mean, I'm talking, if you got like, if you got the the Summit 1G or Soda Poppin or, you know, uh, Asmund Gold, who are just, who are just multi- Shush, 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 stop, stop, no, stop. But if you just have like the Asmin Gold or something that is multi streaming to kick, technically, if he like multi streams to kick, his community is gonna be like, oh my god, Asmin Gold supports all this activity and stuff like, like oh dude, it, it it'll turn into a nightmare. So uh, yeah, giving you the freedom to stream on any service you like. We improved clip discovery with featured clips interesting uh and launched a new way to keep you and your communities connected with twitch stories i don't i don't think this twitch stories was really that big but i mean okay finally we focus on improving stream together making collaborative streaming easier than ever yeah not many people actually use that feature but a couple people do i've seen it a couple times this year we're prioritizing ways to help you grow and stay connected with your community with discovery and collaboration products and improve the mobile experiences improved mobile experiences oh oh yes i'm very curious to see what that means um because again one big thing on Twitch is like 7TV, right? Like these third-party apps that allow you to just interact with the stream even more. On the mobile app, you, you're you're out of touch, right? You're out of touch. You cannot see those emotes or you cannot interact with the stream the same way as somebody on PC does because, well, um, those are third-party tools and they're not made by Kick or not Kick Twitch uh, exclusives. So uh, I'm curious to see how that's going to go. But it seems like they really want to push towards collaborating. They want you to really collab with other streamers to kind of grow your stream. So that's interesting. And of course, the discovery features. Um, I'm curious to see how the discovery features are going to go. They did say, uh, Dan Clancy in a call did say that they experimented with pushing smaller streamers more right um getting smaller streamers out there exposed more and they said that it resulted in a lesser amount of hours watched across the platform as a whole by doing that 
that's I think that's a bit of a stretch to say that. I mean, that's that's um, how long did they test it for? Uh, I mean, like, was it just a bad month or or whatever? Like that, that's the kind of thing, like I was, uh, like I was genuinely curious about, but they said they tried pushing small streamers and it just didn't work. So they just scrapped that idea. So I'm curious to see what other discovery ideas that they're going to come out with here. It seems like only the big streamers that stream here are the controversial ones. Yep. Pretty much. Yep. Share your content on social media. Sharing clips of your content on other social media sites is a great way for new viewers to find you and can help you stay connected with your community. We'll make it easier for streamers and viewers to share clips to social media, including an option to export clips directly to Instagram. Instagram? and enabling you to create on the go with clip editor on mobile. Okay. Okay. That's a big, that's a big one. The Twitch fanatics are going to go crazy about that. And honestly, I agree with them. That is, that is big being able to edit your clips on mobile. There are some people who create are full-time YouTubers and guess what they edit on they edit on their phone or their iPad or whatever. They, they, that's what they edit on. Um, so the fact that you'll be able to edit your clips on mobile and be able to upload them to Instagram or TikTok or YouTube shorts, whatever, that's big. That is big. That is a very, very big thing, I think, in my opinion, for for helping to share your content on social media. I think that's a good change. We'll see, all, of course, all the negative changes that happen over the, over the year of Twitch here, but... Um, I mean, so far, so far, what I will say is that Twitch has been doing a lot of changes that are unironically good. I mean, they're, they're, they're not really changes that are terrible. There's some like bad stuff that kind of sprinkle in there, but ultimately there's a lot of good stuff too lately that they've been doing. So Ninja doesn't even stream here anymore. So Ninja did stream on kick for like two or three days he stopped streaming on kick because of the moderation tools he did not like the moderation on kick like he just it was hard for it was hard for his mods to moderate his channel on kick it was just too hard and it's still terrible to mod on uh, on kick it's still terrible to do it there's not enough there's not enough tools uh that are available to help prevent some trolling and just things like that there's not there's not a, there's not a lot of those features. So, uh Ninja will not multi-stream on Kick until they come out with better moderation tools so that he can mod his chat a lot easier. Just give Kick a cup uh, another couple years. <laughs> yeah. There is some bad stuff. Yeah. There of course is some bad stuff Twitch has been doing. When you doing an IRL stream, I don't know. Making collaborations easier and more rewarding. Again, they're very, very... Dan Clancy has been very focused since the start on, on going for collabs. They want collaborations, and that's what Dan Clancy has really been, been wanting to do. He's been collabing with a lot of streamers, so um, interesting. Collaborations are one of the best ways you can grow and reach new audiences as a streamer. This year, leeching other off of other streamers sometimes. Uh, this year, we're going to continue making them easier easier, more fun, and more rewarding for you. We will be improving stream together, which is currently in beta, and lets up to six streamers go live together on their own channels. On their own channels. What does this mean? What does this mean exactly? Does this mean that, like, is it the exact same live stream on, on six different streams? Or is it like kind of like a group thing so you can go watch whatever channel you want to watch but it's just like they're all streaming together because they're like a group but they're not actually all the same stream i wonder what this means exactly i haven't looked into stream together enough we're making it easier and more intuitive to get set up and to spontaneously find and collaborate with other streamers on twitch interesting so i wonder if they're doing like a discoverability thing ooh, 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 ooh. i wonder if they're gonna introduce something that allows you to be able to flag your channel as like hey um i'm playing rocket league 
okay i'm willing to collab people can go in and see like a list kind of like searching for a team in a video game right um and you can kind of see well oh well this person's wanting to collab as well and play let's uh let's let's contact them let's send them a dm on twitch here uh they're live right now they want to collab uh with other rocket league creators let's do it right let me contact them and see if they want to collab or not i wonder if they're going to do something like that that would honestly I, I don't think it would really be a giant feature but i mean it, again more features is better than less features so I don't think that's a terrible idea. I mean, you could do that with Escape from Tarkov, Rocket League, Valorant, any sort of multiplayer game. You, I mean, you could be streaming and say, hey, I'm this rank or whatever, have a little note uh, under your collab. You're looking, you're searching for, for somebody to collab with and then you have a little note. You could say, you know, I'm Iron 3 in Valorant or, you know, I'm Grand Champ in Rocket League or something like that um, to kind of help people search. That'd be that'd be an interesting feature, honestly. That'd be a very interesting feature. That could be cool because I mean, let's be honest. Guess what? A lot of streaming is just you're on your own, right? You're you're on your own. Some people don't want to collab, which is fine. You also don't really want to go into other people's channels and be like, "Hey, uh, you want to play some games together or something?" Like, you also don't want to go do that right while especially while you're live um so that could be that could be a very interesting feature and could tighten the communities a little bit for certain games interesting i wonder if i wonder if i have the idea correct or not but that that would be that'd be really cool actually i think kick needs more bigger streamers who aren't contra controversial i agree but uh unless they unless they pay millions of dollars for the for these other twitch uh, creators the big ones then it's not going to happen We'll also be adding ways to merge chats and combine viewership so you can create unique and fun cross-community moments together with other streamers. We'll be adding ways to merge chats and combine viewership. Interesting. So I wonder if it's, if you're collabing with another streamer or something, does it just like add the viewership together? And now both of your channels have 50, let, let's say you have a channel with 20 viewers and a channel with 30 viewers. They collab. Does that mean that both channels now have 50 viewers? Or I wonder how that works. I could see that definitely being abused, but um I'm wondering how that works. Merge chats, I think it's fine. It all depends on the UI, how it looks like with merge chats. Cause I want to be able to tell like, are they from my stream or are they from their stream or something? But I mean, that's another, again, another cool feature. So that's interesting. Here we go. Oh my God, this is huge. Let's see. Improving the Twitch mobile experience. Mobile viewing is an important way for viewers to stay connected with the streamers and communities they care about. We're redesigning the mobile app. The first major update since 2019. Twitch app 2.0. Hopefully they'll release it a little bit better than uh, its competitor over here. <clears throat> We're redesigning the mobile app to bring you a more modern, immersive viewing experience by making the discovery feed available to all Twitch users as the new landing experience in the app. The discovery feed, currently a limited experiment, is a scrollable feed of live streams or clips with filters to help you quickly see the latest from streamers you follow and discover new content, even when you only have a few minutes to spare. I think this kind of goes back to, um, you know, that TikTok like scroller, right? You're able to go through clips uh, of live streams and just scroll through them as if you're watching TikTok. But it's, instead of watching TikTok, it's just clips of live streams. Uh, which again, I think is a brilliant idea. I think it's really, really good. I thought Twitch was already already had this, but 
I know that they announced that they were doing it, but I don't know if they already implemented it or not. But again, that that's a very good feature. That is really, really good. That is cool. Because again, mobile, there's a lot of mobile viewers. So the easier you make it to watch on mobile, it's good. Now, keep in mind, out of all these good changes, we still have the ads that get shoved down your throat. I was watching Summit 1G yesterday. Um, I tuned into a stream I watched uh, a minute and a half of ads because I got hit with ads right off. The, literally, I couldn't even watch the stream for a second. I got hit with a minute and a half of ads. Uh, it was, I'm telling you right now, it was about three minutes later, I got hit with another 30 second ad. Uh, yeah. As part of our investment in mobile, we'll be adding new features to stories on Twitch to make it easier to share quick updates with your community beyond your stream. To be honest with you, I don't even know who properly uses uh, these these uh, Twitch stories or updates or whatever. I don't even know what... I, I don't really know what people even use them. I mean, I see them every now and then. It's kind of like... Um, it's kind of like a Instagram story or a Snapchat story. If you don't know what that, if you don't know what it is, basically it's something like that. So quite interesting, but I don't know how I want to, I'm curious to see how beneficial that is. We're adding the ability to create and upload short video stories and rolling out updates. You've been asking for short video stories. So, okay. So that's like, you know, people, you know, posting on, you know, their Snapchat stories or Instagram stories, stuff like that. You know, they could do a little video being like, yo, hey guys, I'm going live right now. No, but seriously though. Uh, so, I mean, it, they're just, again, you know, uh, what is it? Catching up with the Joneses or something like that. They're catching up to what the whole goal was for a story, Instagram, Snapchat stories. Cause that's exactly what they are. Including pinch to zoom for photos and making portrait uh, clips available to share to stories. Wow, I wonder why some people want pinch to zoom. Huh, Amaranth viewers, huh? Yeah, but uh, I mean, still, it's better. For, again, more features is better than than no features, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, by the way here, you know, it's just, uh, <clears throat> let's just take a look at this really quick here. Ready, ready? Let's just, uh, hang on, give me a second. Let me let, let it load here because it takes forever to load. Let me just like, you know, let me, uh, <clears throat> let me just like, you know, pull up, pull up this and like, oh, let me, let me like this clip. Oh, oh, no, oh never mind. The like button's gone. You know, more features is better than less features and, uh, you know, I mean, Kick recently removed the like button from clips for no reason. I mean, there's more important stuff than removing the like button, but they removed the like button for whatever reason. So you can't even filter by like buttons. And on top of that, by the way, if you go on the mobile app, you can still filter by likes, which I don't even know if it works or not, but the like filtering is still there on the mobile app because they never removed it. Anyways, continue. We want to make it easier for viewers to support their favorite streamers on mobile. To do this, we are rebuilding the way users can purchase subscriptions, gifts, and bits to create a better experience on mobile devices. We'll also make mobile-specific improvements to features like Hype Train so they're optimized for mobile. Whoa, 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 what is this? We want to make it easier for viewers to support their favorite streamers on mobile. To do this, we're, we are rebuilding the way users can purchase subs, gifts, and bits. How? Wait, how? Because here's the thing. So the reason why I'm confused about this is if you have your app on Android, on the, on the app store and Android phones, that Google takes 30% of the fee, okay? Google takes 30% of the fee. So meaning that if you buy a sub for $4.99, it, Google takes 30% and it gets, the streamer makes even less money. So what they did instead is that on subs, subs for mobiles cost like, what is it like 649 or whatever? Basically, if you buy a mobile sub, you have to pay that 30% fee. But not only does this apply to Android and Google taking a 30% cut, Apple also takes a 30% cut as well. So 
I don't know how they're going to try to rebuild the way that users can purchase this because currently you pay for the 30% cut that Apple and or Google takes from your from your purchase. So unless they try to bypass it, um, which again, Apple and Google do not allow, they will remove your app from the store if you can bypass this. Um you know, by bypassing, I mean being able to use the mobile app to pay without having a microtransaction in the mobile app that doesn't give a fee to Apple or Google. They will remove your app from the app store. That's against their TOS. Again, monopolizing piece of junk companies. Uh, but anyways, so I'm cur- I'm very curious to see how they're going to do this because um, that's quite interesting. We'll also make mobile specific improvements, features like hype train, scam train. Finally, until now, many of our mod tools have been available on desktop only. A real limitation in keeping your community safe. Our mod tools should be flexible, easy to use, and move with you. Later this year, we plan to roll out mobile mod view on iOS to make it easier to mod from where you are. What about Android? What about Android? But regardless, that's a really good that's a really good feature. That is really really good. There are there are a good amount of people who are mods and channels, but they're they're on their phone, right? They're not they can't be on the computer all the time. So then they can't do their job, right? Um, not to mention streamers, right? People who you know are are streamers, IRL streamers, for example it's not the easiest method to to mod your channel and stuff. So the fact that they're going to be adding a mobile mod view, that's really good. That's really cool. So that's uh, again another that's a that's a, another really good thing I will say for sure. Yo Cade welcome back. How's the stream? We're go- it's good. It's good. We're chilling. We are chilling. We're chilling talking about uh Twitch's plans for for 2024 the upcoming year or so and honestly I mean obviously of course all of them are going to look really good they're not going to talk about anything really bad uh, because obviously that would be bad of course right they don't want bad so we'll see what kind of bad stuff comes out as well but ultimately all these changes here are like really really good changes some of them are not really who cares but uh, there's like a lot of good ones Over the past year, we've made a number of changes to help you make more money on Twitch. We've launched and recently updated the Plus program, the Partner Plus program, to give qualifying streamers higher revenue shares, which includes affiliates, by the way, which is a major benefit. You don't have to be a partner anymore, which helped triple the number of streamers earning premium revenue shares. Although it's not no 95.5, the maximum number you can earn here is 70-30 revenue split. Or you could get 60-40 is the first step. So, I mean, still, although it's not incredibly insane, amazing, wow, super crazy, it is It is honestly, uh, I mean, it is good. It, it is better than just being stuck at 50-50. He opened it up to a lot more. Honestly, Dan Clancy is, is probably the greatest thing to ever happen to Twitch, let's be honest. Although there's some bad things, of course, that have happened, you know, you getting less revenue per subs and stuff like that, and it's going to only keep getting lower and lower. Right now, it's still... Um, I mean, a lot of great changes. So shout out to Dan Clancy. The guy's actually doing something and um, he's actually doing something and making changes for the better to the platform. So major shout out to him. Yo, Johan, welcome back. The new CEO is cool and streaming with his music. Indeed, 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 indeed. Um, I agree. He's he's also the new the new CEO also goes into a lot of streams, right? He goes into a lot of streams, collabs with them, talks with them. He does IRL. He does a ton of live streams talking about, you know, changes they've done to the platform and changes that are going to be happening and why they did something, why they did something that they did. He's very, very talkative and talks a lot about stuff that's going on. Um, A little bit better than... um, kick uh that was originally supposed to have a lot of you know interactions and uh inform the community be very talkative with the community i don't know where that went 
Uh, we also made the ads incentive program more flexible and easier to manage. I don't think, um, I don't think the ads are perfect. Uh, well, they're obviously not perfect. The ads on Twitch suck. And here's the thing. I'm not saying like, oh, we don't, I don't want any ads on Twitch. Of course they have to have ads, but the methods that they use to make you watch ads, I think are, are wrong. I, I think there are better ways to go around it. I don't mind watching ads. Okay. I really don't. But when I first tune into a live stream and I get unlucky because I tune into the live stream, the moment an ad break plays and I watch a minute and a half of ads. Okay. Before I don't even see the live stream before I watch all those ads. And this is my first time tuning into the live stream today. Okay. And then once I watch those ads, I watch for two to three minutes and I get hit with 30 seconds of ads again. I just watched ads a couple minutes ago, right? So again, I don't, they can, hopefully he works on, hopefully he reworks how ads are played on Twitch a little bit, giving the person, you know, trying to make it smoother, uh, a much smoother experience. Cause right now it is a choppy jumbled mess. That's a piece of garbage, right? Um, but, uh, but hopefully they, they, they look into it a little bit, but we'll see. Yo, Pedro, welcome back. Good to see you again, dude. Welcome back. Welcome back. He actually used Starlink. They getting more money now by ads now. Uh, well, of course, of course, they do get more money off of the way they run ads right now compared to if they change it at all a little bit. But I mean, it's just a better viewing experience. I think you would have more viewers on Twitch if you change the ads just slightly, just adjust them a little bit. So it's a smoother experience, right? A smoother experience. Give the viewer an option to push an ad back two minutes so they can finish watching what they're watching and then they'll watch 30 seconds of extra ads right do something like that you know we also uh how are you i'm doing good dude i'm doing good how are you brother man i'm chilling i'm chilling we also made the ads incentive program more flexible and easier to manage and created new display ad formats which yeah they're, they're banner ads and stuff i mean it's better and improved tooling to make ads experience less disruptive. It's still ridiculous. It's still stupid. It's not, it's awful. In fact, we've created a sustainable, transparent framework for streamer compensation that will expand upon this 2024 to help you reach your goals. Interesting. A sustainable. I wonder if they mean sustainable for the streamer, or sustainable for them. Interesting. Did you fulfill KCIP? Well, I've been in the creator incentive program. So yeah, otherwise I would I would not I would not meet those requirements. In fact, I would not be full time streaming. I probably wouldn't even be streaming at all, to be fair. Twenty seconds of ads is better than uh it's better than TV ads. It is technically better than TV ads. TV has more ads than watching a Twitch stream or whatever. The the issue with with that is which ad it's live stream it's a live stream right so you will if you th if those ads play you will miss out on content um and if there's like a super high action thing going on um then you will miss out on that right you might miss out on that so that's that's like a big issue with it in 2023 we built channel skins sponsored discount subs host red ads and more we got great feedback on our pilot sponsorship activations for both brands and streamers in 2024 our focus is on expanding the number of brands we are working with and bringing new sponsorship opportunities to more streamers so twitch has a thing on there that you can go find sponsorships okay and you can get sponsored to do um you could go get sponsored to do whatever right on, on on twitch okay there's a bunch of different sponsorship opportunities that you can go through and look through and take if you want here's the downside of it twitch does take a percentage of the money split okay so twitch takes a percentage of the money that you get from that sponsorship because they get you the sponsorship right like they they're they kind of help get you 
that sponsorship and get you that money and stuff like that. So Twitch takes a bit of a percentage of that because obviously they want their share for getting you that sponsorship. So it's kind of a double-edged sword a little bit, but um, I mean, I could see it being useful for, for a good amount of people though, for sure. What do you think about 4K resolution streams coming into Twitch? Um, they're introducing AV1 live streaming. I think it's cool. I mean, hey, I, I I don't really see a major benefit of people streaming in 4K, but I mean, hey, brother, man, if you have the ability to stream in 4K 60 FPS, do it, right? Do it. Who cares, right? You might as well give it a shot. Go for it. You know, all the power to you. So um, that 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 would be what I would say. What up, Strokes? You're welcome back, dude. Welcome back. Thank you for the alert, Cade. Appreciate it, dude. New incentives to encourage support. In 2024, we'll, uh, we'll create new milestones and rewards that your community can unlock by cheering, gifting, or subscribing. So like Scam Train. We're planning improvements to Scam Train, including updating rewards regularly and are trying new types of interactions with bits to, involve, to evolve cheering. You can also expect some new alerts features. Lastly, we'll build on the success of September and the end of year bonus round by expanding our Twitch wide promotional events to help you earn more. Interesting. I'm not quite sure. Maybe somebody can let me know what you guys think of what this means here, but there's a lot of like stuff in here, not insanely clear, but um, I'm curious. I'm curious what this fully means, but um, I don't know if anybody knows. Just let me know. I'm curious. Increase sub prices. Wow, increasing sub price. They did actually mention that in here. I mean, I, I give them props because obviously this is not good news. This is bad news. So uh interesting. We announced changes to prime gaming sub revenue payouts in January. They went down, which gave us the ability to increase sub pricing in select markets so that streamers can take home more revenue to keep pacing with rising costs. So again, basically what their what their idea here is increase the amount that a sub costs, a tier one, sub tier two, tier three. Right now, tier one is mainly affected. Turkey though, all of the, all the subs, including all tiers are upped. Uh, but the Turkey subs quadrupled in price, by the way. Everything else kind of went up by like a dollar, basically. It went up by like $1. Um, and the idea is they're like, oh, well, you can make more money off of it because of, of a higher sub revenue. I, I mean, ultimately, yes, you, you can make a little bit more money, but uh, not, it's not really, I mean, again, the, the people have to pay a, $1 a month more for, for a sub. Even though I know it doesn't sound like a lot. I mean, some of these people have had a sub going for, you know, um, 120 months. I mean, they've been sub for 10 years at this same similar price. And then having it go up, it's like maybe they just can't, um, maybe they just can't do it or something. I don't know. You never know. You never know though, right? So I don't know. I think they adding taxes in beside. What do you mean? Brazil will have increased more for sub, potentially 4K hot subs, hot tub streams. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we increased the price of tier one subs in Australia, Canada, and the UK, and raised the price of all subs in Turkey. Uh, and in Turkey, the first time we've raised raised sub prices since their inception. We anticipate raising sub prices in some additional countries later this year. U.S. will be one of them. Okay, the U.S. will be one of those countries that will be going up by about a dollar, uh, I believe. It would if it U.S. prices should go up, making sub be five ninety nine rather than four ninety nine. Um, and the and the reason I say it should go up a dollar ish is because Australia, Canada, and U.K. went up by a dollar, and it kind of keeps in line with the conversion rate and stuff like that. So. Yeah, we'll make sure to give you plenty of notice before we introduce additional changes in this area. Yeah, because they don't want to all of a sudden just boom, change it because obviously they could get in trouble for that if they just boom, change it um, and all that. Because not to mention, um, not to mention in Australia, Canada, and the UK and Turkey, the subs are uh, the subs that are on auto renew will auto renew at the new price. 
So they have to legally make sure they give you enough notice that the price is changing. Otherwise, uh, they could get in a lot of legal issues here. So they're going to give you a lot of months, a lot of time uh, before your sub price goes up. So that way they can cover their own butt legally. Um, but it will auto renew, okay? It will auto renew at the new sub price. So Turkey, in my opinion, Australia, Canada, UK, it's a dollar more, eh, you know. Turkey, though, is the big issue. Turkey prices on tier one, two, and three subs quadrupled. I looked at them, they, they literally quadrupled in price. So hopefully people from Turkey... That's not a big factor, and they they look at it, and they look into it, hopefully. I can't slash? Wait, what do you mean? You can't type slash? Wait, really? 90 slash 10. Why can't you slash? Uh, 90, 10 for Twitch. Take all my money for having a good site. You want Twitch to take 90%? Twitch makes me brick. Their features are so much better than kick. I mean, they have included tax uh, in the increase of it. Oh, you, oh, including like the tax of it? Okay, I mean, okay. Keeping your community safe. Okay, thankfully they put, um, you know, communities in there. Rather than just keeping you safe. That would have been uh, bad. But anyways, uh, safety continues to be a top priority for all of our teams. We want you to feel safe on our service and feel empowered to create. <clears throat> kick. <clears throat> safety. <clears throat> kick. Uh, throughout 2023, we rolled out products and policies designed to better protect you from harm. We focus on improving our existing mod tools and introduce new features like our batch reporting tool and shared mod comments. Shared mod comments is pretty cool. It's not a giant feature, but it is pretty cool. A mod who bans somebody can make a little comment on this user being like, hey, they're a known troll or whatever. So for future mods. We made shield mode easier to use and more powerful by integrating it into mod view and adding support for Twitch alerts, okay? We also made key improvements to our safety policies to better ensure they meet the needs of our community, okay? But again, they're still selective on who they enforce and stuff. We expanded the scope of our off-service conduct policy, for example, Adding doxing and swatting to the list of behaviors we'll enforce against. Well, yeah, of course. Recognizing that harm that takes place outside of our service has a big impact on our own Twitch community. So essentially what they're saying here is, oh, well, one of the reasons we added protection against doxing and swatting and, and that they'll enforce against it is because, well, if we have our creators being doxxed and swatted and stuff, and we don't do anything about it, then they'll just stop streaming on Twitch, and that hurts Twitch. So we don't want that. So instead, let's do something about it. Slash is used for mods command, needs mod or admin priv privileges. But you're telling me that you, you can't type slash in the middle of a sentence? Is that what you're telling me, Delore? Okay. Yeah, I heard there's something about Delore, but I don't know too much about that. Reducing harassment. Test, nope, cannot. Okay, well, no, there's, there's a bunch of slashes. Okay. I know you can't do it at the beginning of the, because there's like mod commands that I don't even know if they work, but slash lol. Oh, well, he did it. Okay, I don't know. Reducing harassment. We'll continue our work to combat harassment on Twitch. Throughout 2023, we conducted user surveys Yo, did anybody get a survey? Type one in chat if you got a survey. Met with creators around the world and reviewed the tools and policies we use to prevent harassment on Twitch. Our goal was to better understand how harassment is experienced on our service and uncover gaps in our own policy. Policy is just like, but still, I mean, okay. And product approaches. This year, we'll roll out updates to our community guidelines. Okay, including clearer updated harm definitions and more severe penalty for some types of harassment. 
We're also building tools to better identify harassment across our services, including changes that would block more harassment before it shows up in your chat. Okay. Okay. Well done. Well done. Good. Well done. Good, good, good. Okay. We regularly get questions. Uh, so updating our enforcement system. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's see this. Okay. Whew. We regularly get questions about suspensions. How long of a suspension is applied after a particular community guidelines violation and whether they expire? For example, we want to ensure that when someone breaks our community guidelines, the suspension we issue matches the severity and seriousness of the harm. We also recognize that some suspicions, uh, some suspensions shouldn't stick around forever. We've seen this on kick though. We've seen this on kick happen a couple of times, right? Is that they'll say like, Oh, like when we want to ensure that when somebody breaks it, we we issue a suspension or we issue a proper method to to go against it. However, we also want to recognize that some suspensions shouldn't just be around forever. You know, they they're not all equal, even though they're the, the exact same thing. Okay, anyways. Like violations of our lower severity policies, which cover non-malicious or accidental behaviors that aren't likely to result in serious physical or emotional harm. Including a drug-related term in your username is an example. Okay. We're working to ensure uh, we're enforcing our community guidelines fairly and we'll have more to share soon. Fairly, huh? Fairly. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. I'm curious to see how this is going to go, but ultimately, listen, man, you can upgrade. At the end of the day, you can update your community guidelines all you want. I mean, we've seen it with Kick. We've seen it with Twitch time and time again. You can up uh, uh, like update your community guidelines all you want. All it comes down to is whether you enforce it. Because let's be honest, some of the stuff that happens is against the community guidelines or it should be, and they acknowledge that it is, they just don't do anything about it. We've seen that before too. So uh, I don't know if anything's going to really change here, but uh, at least if something does change, I don't think it'll be very noticeable if if this is even a change, right? You, We, we as the consumer, as the as the user, probably won't be able to see a lot of it. They have now, if you type what age you are like underage, they will ban you directly. Interesting. Okay. Wrapping things up. There's a lot to be excited about in 2024. We're focusing on the products, tools, and programs to help you build your communities and make it more rewarding, fun, and safe. The list above includes just a portion of some of the things we are working on for 2024, and we look forward to sharing more over the course of the year. At least this is a very rough roadmap of some ideas that they have. At least it's something. In addition to our efforts to improve the Twitch service, we also are focused on continuing to improve how we engage and communicate with the Twitch community. We have received very positive feedback about the live streams following big announcements. And again, I will agree. Dan Clancy, after a major announcement goes out, the next day, Dan Clancy goes live and talks about it, takes questions, gives reasoning behind why they did it, and a whole bunch of information, which has been really, really good. And we plan to continue to develop programs such as Patch Notes to provide you regular insight into the work that we are doing. Personally, I am planning on continuing to travel around to meet with streamers across the globe, which he has been doing. And honestly, I'm jealous of him that he's able to go do that, but major props to him. He is traveling all around the world, you know, collabing with streamers from everywhere, doing live streams, IRL streams with them. So major props to him for doing that. That is really, really cool. These interactions are invaluable in helping me understand many of the challenges that you face, and it helps with exploring new ideas and areas of exploration for the service, which is honestly really cool as well, right? Because, yes, by him going around and IRL streaming it, 
he learns the complications and he finds things himself too that he's like I want to be able to do this but I can't or at least I can't do it very easily I got to do this then that then this like a whole bunch of different things that he's got to do in loopholes he's got to get around to try to do one simple thing so he's experiencing that and he's learning uh a bunch of different things of being a live streamer so um I, that's really really cool he plays games too yeah he does games too he will go to like otk events and stuff like that they play video games and stuff he'll go hang out with them play games and stuff and 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 just you know is he's, he's very very honestly down to earth okay honestly down to earth Although there are, again, some, some downsides of things that happen and stuff like that, he's ultimately making major changes to Twitch. I mean, these changes never happened with Emmett Shear, okay, which was the previous CEO of Twitch. There was nothing, nothing, no news. There was no information. It was just, hey, here's a bad update. Boom, that's it. Silence. That's it. Throw that update out there. Get it out there. That done. Like, there's nothing. Nothing was happening. Dan Clancy comes in and he just walks through. He bursts through the door, man, walking in and he takes over. He takes control. Okay. And um, is very, very communicative. Like I said, I mentioned this before. I feel like the way that Twitch and Kit kind of happen now is they're the complete opposite. When Kick first started, they were very communicative. Emmett Shear was the CEO of Twitch, which was very silent. So again, Kick, very communicative, very open with their community, talking a lot with their community and stuff like that. Twitch, completely silent, nothing really going on, very quiet about any plans. An update comes out, nothing is said about it, nothing, okay? And then we got to the point where things flip-flopped. Kick became silent. Here's a little update, no explanation as to why. We have no idea what's going on. We, we, we don't know anything, right? Completely silent, okay? We don't know nothing. Okay. And Twitch then changing, of course, with Dan Clancy, new Twitch CEO of being wide open, very talkative with the community. We know what's going on. We know what's happening. We know a ton of information and stuff. They, both of these platforms completely flip-flopped. Uh, honestly, they completely flip-flopped with the way that they run things. Um, and I mean, bro, the Twitch stuff, like, hey, I, I, I just like, I mean, I give, I give props to Dan Clancy. This guy's actually making a difference and making some changes on Twitch, even though Twitch isn't necessarily the greatest and there's still issues and stuff. He's making changes that are pretty beneficial. I would say, um, Dan do not have anything bad to say about, uh, to say about with kick. Oh no, of course. If you ask Dan Clancy about kick, he's not going to say anything bad. There's a couple different reasons, right? There's a couple different reasons because one thing here is that he obviously doesn't want to say anything bad about Kick because, I mean, he would be in a lot of trouble if he did that, right? He'd be in a lot of trouble, PR trouble, if he did that, right? Um, it just wouldn't be right as him as a CEO. It's, it seems petty. At the end of the day, he doesn't have to say anything about Kick. To be fair, he doesn't really have anything super crazy to worry about Kick either. He knows that Kick is poached, trying to poach Twitch viewers, but ultimately, um, Kick is just you know it's it's lacking in a lot of areas uh, that kind of keeps those viewers over here, right? So Dan Clancy ultimately doesn't have anything to worry about um, for for quite a long time until Kick really starts to make some progressions and some changes that really push and keep people on the platform and give viewers a reason to come to kick. So he doesn't really have anything to worry about, but that's not the main reason. The main reason is it's a very bad look for him as the CEO of Twitch to badmouth any other platform. All he's going to say is, Hey, um, the kick exists. They're doing their own thing. Hey, all the power to him. And he's mentioned multiple times, these streamers, XQC, Aiden Ross, all these streamers and stuff that are getting these multi-million dollar contracts and stuff, all the power to him. He's literally mentioned it on stream. Take the money, take the money, do what you think is going to be there. Twitch will be here for you if you decide to come back or, 
you know, whatever you decide to do, take the money, go experience uh, different things. Dan Clancy's literally said that on stream before, like it's very down to earth and he's very, very much correct, right? These streamers take the money. Do it. What the heck, dude, right? As long as you're getting paid for it and, and you can justify getting paid for it and stuff, go for it. And that's kind of what he says. The major props, uh, major, major props to major, major props to him. He did that three to four weeks ago, if I'm correct. Oh, he did that the moment XQC got signed. When XQC got signed and stuff and he got asked about it on his live stream, he talked about it. And that was how many months ago? He's just all for it, man. He, he, likes, he likes kick. In the aspect of just like, hey, kicks another streaming platform. Competition is great. Just, bro, give give them give them a thing, right? So Twitch doesn't really care that kick exists. To be fair, I mean they, they don't really care that much. Okay, um, kick on the other hand, kick's main goal here, main motto is to steal and poach Twitch viewers. That's what kick's main motto is. They want to be better than Twitch rather than make their own unique thing and their own unique reasons uh for you to come to kick right like the kick just wants to poach twitch viewers and that, that's what that's their whole goal that is okay um so yeah but i mean honestly you guys let me know what you think uh about the updates here uh to twitch what you think this year looks like off of this what do you guys think what do you guys think in me in my opinion it's it's honestly looking good. It's it's not looking terrible. Would I go to Twitch? No, not really. Again, if I don't have a following that I can even do that with, no. But honestly, all the power to them, right? All the power to them. Uh, they're 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 actually doing some great changes and some some uh, very communicative with their community and stuff. So all the power to them. Twitch is making moves, okay? It's making moves. So uh, major props to them. You can always multi. Yeah, of course. Of course. And, and okay, here's this idea. And Dan Clancy kind of shares this idea as well. Uh, there's this idea that like, well, well, you know, you can multi-stream if you want, but I believe it's better if you don't multi-stream and you focus on one platform at all. Um which although it might be a little bit true at the end of the day it doesn't really it it depends on the size of streamer you are at the end of the day bro just multi-stream who cares right you don't even have to focus on your chat on another platform if you don't really want to right you, you don't really have to should you you should maybe to try to grow an audience over there but you don't have to so these people who are like you know focus on one single platform i mean yes you could but i just if depending on how big you are, if you don't have any viewers on any platform, just multi-stream. Keep an eye on all the all the chats, though. That's a big thing. Keep an eye on all the chats. Interact. Um, like, yeah, just go do that. You can't multi-stream on the creator incentive program, right? So here's the way that the creator incentive program works a little bit. Okay. You you can stream on another platform. So I could go stream on Twitch if I wanted, but I can't stream at the same time I'm streaming on Kick. Okay, I can't multi-stream. If I do though, if I do and I want to, then I won't earn anything from the creator incentive program, right? So I won't I won't get paid. So I can multi-stream to Twitch and YouTube, but I just won't get paid, okay? Otherwise, I can multi-stream and get paid from kick while multi-streaming to TikTok and Instagram, I believe. If I live stream to multi-stream to those two platforms, I can, and it doesn't matter, right? I, I'm allowed to do that. But I cannot multi-stream to Twitch or YouTube, which ultimately it makes sense. Um, it makes sense. And Twitter, I don't actually know. That's a good question. I don't know about Twitter or things like that. That's a very good question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But just the main competitors is really what they don't want you multi-streaming to, which is fair, okay? It is fair, and here's why. Kick is literally paying you to live stream. They pay you per live stream. So it doesn't make sense for them to pay you to, to multi-stream on, on a direct competitor. So that's that's like the that's the main thing, which it makes sense, right? It does make sense. 
there's a couple of different things there that are kind of hindrance, but it, but regardless, uh, it makes sense. But okay, Twitch is unwatchable with the ads right now. The ads are probably the biggest change, the biggest issue with Twitch. Okay, the ads are probably one of the biggest issues with Twitch. And again, like I mentioned many times, I'm not against watching ads. I know ads have to exist for them to make money. That's perfectly fine. But it's the fact that it's not a smooth user experience. It is not a good user experience, uh, the ads on Twitch. It's not. And honestly, that is one of the biggest things that is kind of punishing Twitch. It, it is punishing the growth of Twitch. It, it's punishing people who are existing on Twitch. That's a major issue with it. If they changed it and they made it a smoother experience with how ads are played, it would be a it would be a whole nother ball game, dude. Twitch would would not be that bad. Okay. It wouldn't be that bad. Um but the ads are definitely the biggest issue with Twitch for sure. Otherwise, there's a lot of great stuff on Twitch. There's a lot of great stuff. So, uh, yeah, you know, Twitch is unwatched. Isn't, now, correct me if I'm wrong, it, what is easier? I don't remember. What's easier to get the sub button? Is kick easier than Twitch to get the sub button or no? I don't, I don't actually remember what the requirements are for Twitch or kick. I can't even, I can't even see the requirements anymore. I can't. Unless somebody sends me a screenshot of the requirements, I cannot see the requirements in order to get the sub button. I, I can't even see them anymore because they go away at once you once you reach them. Um let's see. All I'm gonna say is I like Dan more, but I don't like the ads on there. Yeah, the ads on Twitch are are a major, major downside. The major benefits of kick is the 95.5 revenue split, no ads, and the creator incentive program. Those are the three main benefits, the three main things that Kick has that is way better than Twitch. Otherwise, every other, every single feature else benefits Twitch more. And uh, everything else, Twitch dominates Kick in. Now, one of the main things is... Um, one of the main things with kick though is that two of those major benefits, the 95, five revenue split and the creator incentive program is the streamer, not the viewer. No ads is for the viewer. But like I said, that's it. Everything else switch like dominates kick in. Let's be honest, right? It, it just is at the current moment. It just dominates. I'm excited for new, better clipping tools. ESP on mobile. I agree. Have a multi-streamer ever succeeded? No, so it's overrated what people say it is. I mean, here's the thing. I, you don't have anything to lose by multi-streaming, right? That's the thing. You don't have anything to lose by multi-streaming, okay? I mean, Ninja does it. Ninja multi-streams and he succeeds, right? He succeeds, so hey. Um, Twitch is unwatchable with the ads right now. I agree. It, it sucks really badly. Just the main competitors. What up, Travi? I think kick requires more followers, though. I think I think it does, too. Kick, you just don't need average viewers to unlock the sub button. That's true. I think kick was slightly easier, but it's uh, it's been a while since I checked. Okay, okay, okay. Fair enough. Pretty sure ads are on the way. Ads are on the way to kick. I, I, I don't know about that. I think I think it's still going to be a long time because at the end of the day, Kick's main method of gaining money is not really from ads. They don't really care too much about ads. Um, they they more so have other methods and means of uh, you know gaining revenue from you. So yeah, I don't think um, yeah. Wait, on a Saturday stream, Eddie mentioned it. Uh, well, yeah, no, obviously, obviously he's going to say ads are on the way, but they're, they're not going to be anytime soon. If kick introduced ads anytime soon, especially with the current state of the platform, they would, they would kill the platform. It would, they, they would kill it. I don't care how you implement the platform. They in, into the platform, they would kill it at the current state that kick is right. They would kill it. Yeah. Anyways, again, for the, for the VOD watchers, if you watch this whole thing, major props to you. Let me know what you think about this update down below and, and my thoughts on this, you know.